Hey, how's it going, everybody? Scott Sprenzer here with Doug Upstone. We are DocSports.com. This is marquee matchup for the upcoming weekend, and we're going to be talking about Oklahoma and Baylor on this update. Oklahoma still, of course, Doug, in the running for the national title, hoping for a playoff spot, all that good stuff. Uh, it's, it's funny when you watch college football playoff rankings, Doug, and then the AP rankings, and then guys like us. I don't know if you use power ratings. I certainly have been using my own power ratings for many, many years now. Not everybody in, in our business does, and you don't have to, but that's where I feel comfortable as a starting point when I'm handicapping games. And I'm looking at Oklahoma, and I'm thinking, all right, I, I actually have them ranked fourth in my power ratings, Doug. But, you know, after Georgia and Alabama, for me at least, there's a whole bunch of teams that can knock each other off on any given week between, like, my third best team and my tenth best team. Uh, so it's really close after Georgia – and then Alabama it was a little bit down from Georgia. And I'll give you what my hypotheticals or my power ratings numbers say that those lines should be uh, in just a minute. But I was going to ask you what you thought about all this. I mean, I, I never really pay much attention to the AP rankings other than I want to see where these teams might be overrated or underrated and where the public might follow suit in those situations, where lines might go after they open for that upcoming week based on this kind of stuff. And, you know, when I see a team like Louisiana who has beaten – Nicole State nine times this year, and their only step-up game it came against an, an okay but nothing special Texas team. That was their only loss. You know, I don't have them in my top 25. I'm sorry, folks, just the way it is. So what are your thoughts on the college football rankings, how you rank the teams, you know, and, and maybe some teams that might come into the mix over the next couple of weeks? Yeah, you know, the, the – I'm mean, like you. I have I've been doing power uh, rankings for years, okay, and uh, three different sets specifically. But one in particular that I kind of focus in on, and one that I whether I'd be you know doing talking with you or you know in, in different things, write ups or whatever. Those are the ones I kind of use the most. And uh, like what you said, Georgia and Alabama stand out uh, in particular. Uh, after that, it seems to be you know in the last several years with these rankings, it seems like there's three teams and then there's the fourth. You know, and that's right. this year. It doesn't. It doesn't seem that way. It seems like there's two, and so that's one major difference. Um, I don't know what you like with Cincinnati. You know, there was all this outrage. You know, how could Cincinnati be sixth? Okay, it's terrible. Oh my goodness. You know, they're undefeated. They're this and that. Well, when they had an opportunity, they had a game day in Cincinnati, ESPN game day. They had the whole situation ripe. Okay, a team that they were 22 and a half point favored against. And they were lucky to beat Tulsa. Yeah. And I don't care what Tulsa record, you know, against other top 25 teams has been, you know, the last however many years it was. That's insignificant to me. This was this was Cincinnati's chance. They didn't take advantage of it. So they don't belong in the top four to me, okay? And I don't know what's going to change my mind at this point based on who they're going to play. Uh, I also, you know, from that standpoint, uh, I, like you, I don't put – much into into these rankings because one of the things that we've seen uh, pretty much from the start is that whatever the initial rankings are and what they end up being, we see crazy <laughs> crap going on with these voters. Okay, they just I mean they seemingly change their mind on a dime. So the right. only thing that really matters pretty much is until you get to the week before the last one. So when they play the conference championships. That's the one that gives you probably a better indication as to what could happen. And all this other stuff is good fodder for television and for ESPN and, and for people like us that want to talk about it. But yes, well, I, so Georgia, I'll, just, I'll make this quick. Georgia, um, the Alabama, Ohio State, and Michigan this week are my top four, Scott. Okay, and by my power ratings, Georgia, Alabama, one and two, uh, followed by Ohio State and Oklahoma. So I've actually got Oklahoma fourth. I agree with Cincinnati. Um, you know, it's funny, when, and I'm going to give you, by the way, some hypothetical numbers on what if these two teams would beat the national title in just a second. But, you know, one of the things that bothers me is like, and, and I'm a fan of Joel Klatt, so don't get me wrong when I bring up his name and say I don't like the way he talks about ranking teams in the top 25. He's, he was a good quarterback at Colorado. He knows his stuff. There's no doubt about it. I like Joel Klatt. Uh, and I think he's very fair. Uh, whether it be talking up a team or talking down a team for the most part. But when he's asked about, like, let's say, for instance, Cincinnati, do they belong in the top four? You know, and I'm using this as an example. It wasn't these exact words, but he comes up with things like, well, they're undefeated, aren't they? 
you know, they're one of five undefeated teams. They should be in the top five. And again, I'm kind of short and exaggerating what he says, and I'm not picking on him because that's what the normal AP voter or the person who doesn't bet for a living happens to think. Well, you know, Louisiana's only lost one game all year. You know, they're eight and one. Okay, great. They beat Nickel State, Appalachian State, nothing against App State, but still, you know, here they are in the top 25, and I know a lot of betters that don't have them there. Uh, listen, I've still got Nebraska in my top 30, Doug. They're three and seven. They're in my top 30 power rating wise. And I'm as hard on my home team as you could possibly be. Uh, but again, that's why their number is always where it is every week and why they cover point spreads. So anyway, having said that, we're kind of close. What was your fourth place team again that you have right now? Michigan. Michigan. And, okay, and yeah. it's, it has to do just with, with, with numbers, not with hardball blowing big games. Right. Of course. And that's the thing. I got Michigan fifth, so we're not that far off. Uh, I don't have my top four, but they're fifth. So they're right there on the cusp. Oklahoma loses to Baylor and Michigan wins. They move right into that spot. Um, and that's what they don't do as far as AP, some of the talking heads and the AP voters. What they, you know, we're looking at yards per play differential. We're looking at yeah. points per game differential, things of that nature. They're looking at, holy cow, did you see Ohio State win 59 to three? You know, that's their big thing. I'm, you know, I, I see teams that win by 14 points and were out gained by 75 yards or their yards per play when they won by 14 was 4.5 and their opponent was 5.8. Well, their opponent happened to turn the ball over three times inside their own 20 and they don't factor that stuff in. And again, I don't mean to pick on Joel Cloud. I actually really like his analysis mostly, but just thought of him off the top of my head as a member of somebody who might vote because of a team shiny record a little bit more than yards per play differential, things of that nature. No fault of his own, he's not in the betting game. Here are my numbers. I, I got a call from Kevin Winter at ESPN on Saturday, and uh, he was asking, you know, we'd really love to be able to use your power ratings for some hypothetical matchups. So I'll just tell you where I'm at here. You can tell me if you agree or disagree when I'm done. Remember, I got, just like Doug Upstone, folks, I've got Alabama number two, Georgia number one. So Georgia, three and a half over Alabama. This is a neutral field. Georgia, 17 and a half over Oregon. 15 over Cincinnati, Georgia the favorite. Georgia six and a half over Ohio State. Georgia 12 over Oklahoma. And then if it's Bama in the driver's seat, Bama 14 over the Ducks. Bama 11 and a half over Cincy. Bama three over Ohio State. And finally, Bama eight and a half over Oklahoma. So those were according to my power ratings. And I made it very clear. These, you know, these are gonna be a little bit different than the lines if they were forced to make lines right now on these games because I don't have to worry about perception. I'm not taking bets, I'm making bets. <laughs> yeah, the, I, everything you said there makes perfect sense to me, Scott. I, I, know, I, I don't have those exact numbers in front of me, what I would have, but I know they're close, okay? So yeah. we're on agree, in agreement there. Uh, the only one that I guess, if, if there's one, and this is, this is more uh, of a thought process than is anything else, and it just goes to show you how really good Nick Saban has been at Alabama all these years, is just the fact that Alabama is number two. It you could you could easily make the case in the last. I'm going to say the last eight years, maybe nine. Mm -hmm. This is the weakest Alabama team, and what I mean by that is offensively they're still obviously very good, but defensively this team it it is. Uh, well, for, by Alabama standards, it is not. I mean, because the Georgia defense is the Alabama defense of old right now. And so, but yet, you know, he, he changed his uh, recruiting. He changed, you know, mm -hmm. with the game to have more high-powered offense, believing you can win more with offense than you can with defense, okay? Sure. Last year proved his point for sure on that. But that's, to me, that's the one difference. Uh, and, and, and you can make the case the other way too. But the one difference between the two teams is that Georgia has the complete package except for maybe at quarterback. And the mm. only thing we don't know yet is if, if for example, they play Alabama and presumably in the national or in the uh, SEC championship, mm. if they have a turnover and Alabama goes up ten to nothing or thirteen to nothing, how do they react? How does the quarterback react? How do they react to the situation that they have not been in all year? So that's the only thing to me that I look at to where I think Georgia, at least on paper, is uh, head and shoulders above the rest of the pack right now. Glad you brought that up. I went back the other day. I just had to satisfy an itch, I guess you could say. Or, you know, and I go back the other day and I'm looking at Alabama under Mac Jones. 
and actually the season before too, or the, the championship team before that, compared to this year's team. And I looked at my power ratings. I actually had the Mac Jones Alabama Crimson Tide four points better than this year's team. Yet they're still second in my power ratings of college football uh, this year. So I, I agree with you. Alabama's not quite at the level they were during a couple of their championship runs. One of those teams that is in the mix could potentially play for a national championship, even with one loss. If they well, no, actually they're they're, they're they haven't lost. What am I saying? I'm thinking about their spread record in the case that we're going to talk about coming up against Baylor. But the Oklahoma Sooners were undefeated. They still got a shot at playing for national title. They're laying five and a half total, sixty-two and a half. The game in Waco against the Baylor Bears. Uh, the number is half a point down from the original opener in some shops, which had it at six on Sunday afternoon. An old standby, if you will, Doug, and I say old standby because I bet nothing blindly. And, you know, except for maybe midweek Mac football games going over the total, <laughs> by the way. Uh, but I bet nothing blindly. And here's the thing, though, with Oklahoma. And this goes back a while now. And I know other people have pointed this out, but I'm going to point it out here. And Doug, I'm sure you've followed this, too. But undefeated college football teams on the road this late in the season, you know, they, they're not too hot against the spread over the last several years. So, so straight up against quality opposition. Uh, it might be because the pressure just turns up on these teams that are undefeated and they're thinking potential playoffs, potential national title, the pressure might mount. Also the strains of the long season, things that are happening in your locker room, injuries that are happening on the field. And at this point of the season, you're getting everybody's best shot. So they're going up against a good team here talking about Oklahoma. Baylor did lose last week. And although they only lost by two, Doug, they got out statted, if you will, by an enormous amount. Anyway, Oklahoma lay at five and a half, 62 and a half. I point out a couple of thoughts there and I'll get to my play in just a minute. Uh, but what say you, sir, on this battle between the Sooners and Bears? Yeah, you know, the, uh, oh, by the way, I, I, I did take a quick note. I do have Oklahoma fifth. So that's, uh, so we are very okay. close uh, on that. So the, you know, last week, uh, Baylor, Dave Durant, Duranda will never admit this, okay, but his team was looking ahead. OK, there's no question about it, because TCU came into that game last week uh, in the 50s in t terms of passing yards. So right. there was there was no reason to believe, even though Baylor's pass defense is certainly not great. There was no right. reason to believe that would occur. So they were looking ahead to this game. Now, fortunately for them, they're not dead yet, okay, because if they win this game this week against Oklahoma and they have already beaten Oklahoma State, and Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, Oklahoma State have to play each other. So if mm -hmm. Baylor wins out right now, they're playing for the Big 12 championship. Okay, yeah. so so they're in an interesting position. Now, from that standpoint, you know, look at Oklahoma. As you mentioned, they're undefeated. Okay, and and they have won, I believe, it's seven in a row against Baylor. Yeah, seven in a row. But they but they're only one in four in the last five against the spread against the Bears. Um, you know, Caleb Williams has, has turned this team around for sure with Oklahoma. I mean, they're better offensively. But you, may, you mentioned an interesting point, you know, about what, what happens to teams in November, okay? And what happens to teams, I think, in November, now it's not every team, but a lot of these teams, we saw it last week. If you have a flaw, seemingly you always get exposed. Michigan right. State last week, poor defense, okay, got exposed. Um, I, I forget who the other undefeated team was last week, honestly, that, that lost, but same Wake, thing. They got a Wake Forest. Yeah, Wake Forest. Yeah. yeah, zero defense. <laughs> Not none, zero. Um, but the so you know, they got they got exposed, and that's what can happen. And I'm looking at Oklahoma. Uh, you know, Baylor's got some stuff going on, but Oklahoma is 116th against the pass, okay, in the in the rankings. Uh, that's not gonna get it done. Baylor's not good, they're 81st against the pass but against the pass, but th that's something to really consider going to this week, Scott. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think you get the general idea. I, I got a little more to add, but I think you see where I'm going with this. Yeah, and you know what? It's funny because you and I have got Oklahoma, you know, fourth and fifth. I've got them fourth, you've got them fifth. We've got them kind of inverted with Michigan. Um, and, and really, you know, again, it's, you know, Georgia, Alabama, everybody else off the screen, as you can tell by looking at me, basically. So it's a situation where, yeah, we might have Oklahoma fourth and fifth in our rankings, but it doesn't mean that they automatically beat a team that's 10th or 15th or what have you. 
uh, because there's so much of an even mix of football teams after the top couple. You know, anybody can beat anybody. Uh, listen, uh, again, referring to Nebraska, they could beat Oklahoma if they could, you know, play special teams. Uh, and all these teams that are in the top 10 that have struggled against the Huskers, but Nebraska turned. And this is a team that's three and seven. So it just shows you how wide open outside of maybe those two SEC teams college football is. And I'm not going to be shocked if, let's say, if Alabama gets to the playoffs, if they get beat by one of these teams. I will be shocked if Georgia does. I think they're just so dominant on the defensive side of the football. As far as this game, you got three DBs, five players overall for the Sooners who are listed as questionable for unspecified reasons. We're 10 games into this season, and this is just the second opponent with an above 500 record currently that the Sooners have faced. The, other, the, only, the only one that was above 500 at this point of the season that they faced on their schedule was Texas Tech, who's five and four. Texas Tech is no great shakes. That's it. They've struggled to get by Tulane, Nebraska, Kansas State, Texas, West Virginia, Kansas. I get it. It sounds like I'm making an argument for why are they fourth and fifth in our rankings. Well, it's because we look at, again, yards per play differential, things of that nature, and Oklahoma fits to be a top five team. Uh, having said that, Doug, it is a little tough to, bet, uh, to back Baylor sometimes after they get clobbered by a team like TCU. I agree with you. Thought they were looking ahead. They gave up 560 yards of the Horned Frogs and only gained about 390 themselves. They only gained 285 yards and a loss to Oklahoma State first weekend of October. So I'm trying to decide right now is, yeah, okay, maybe Oklahoma can get beat by anybody else in the top 15 or 20. But is Baylor a 12th or 13th team in reality? I look at all this, I put it into the blender, and I come up with, you know what? I actually like 62 and a half I like under 62 and a half in this particular matchup. I do think Baylor is going to bring the defense better than they did last week, and they better. And I think Oklahoma is going to be a little bit better on defense than we've seen at certain points throughout the course of this season. So get your play from you, Doug. Mine is under 62 and a half. Well, uh, here's the thing. I you know I went further on this game and, and to look at it besides some of the things that I just mentioned. And this is a, let's just call it a handicapping information. Uh, let's just, I, don't know, I don't know if it's a tip. It's just something that I do. And I, I, I know you do the same, Scott, is that, you know, season ranking or season numbers are important, but they're not the tell-all. Okay. Looking at numbers. Right. You also have to look at recent trends in terms of how teams are playing. And Oklahoma early in the year was pretty good against the run. They have not mm -hmm. been very good against the run lately. Conversely, Baylor was flat out terrible. I think they gave up in their first either four or five, three or three to five games, at least 200 yards rushing. They have given up on average under 100 in their last four games. So I'm looking at this game is to, what team has the stronger running game? Okay. And, and, and can move and be able to move the ball. I think that's going to be Baylor. Okay. Cause they, they already do. They average more yards per, uh, per carry and total yards. Mm -hmm. And if they're better against the run, both teams are going to be able to throw the ball. I don't, I don't have much doubt about that. So I think whichever team run has the most rushing yards in this game, Scott, I think that's who is going to win the game. And I think that's who's going to, in this case, cover the spread as well. So I'm going to take Baylor in this case, uh, plus the five or five and a half. And I also like the fact that Baylor in the uh, last six times that they have faced a team that averages 37 or more points, six and mm -hmm. oh, Scott, Baylor Bears is my pick. There you go. And he's not hesitating. I mean, let's not beat around the bush here. So Doug says the Baylor Bears plus the points. And I mentioned again, to go along with what you said about Baylor and that spread mark of six and oh, you know, again, these college football undefeated road teams at this point of the season and beyond in the regular season, have, have damaged some bankrolls when they go on the road against quality football teams. And I think, if I remember right, it's like teams against teams that are playing like 700 football or better on the, over the course of the season, which would fit the Baylor Bears. Um, also wanted to mention before we let everybody get away that uh, college basketball is underway. I usually kick back on Mondays. I've kind of done my work on Sunday night for the upcoming week, compare my numbers to the opening numbers uh, for the upcoming week at the books. And then Monday, I like to kick it back a little bit. Wait for that Monday night football game if I've got action on it. Oh, man, not this last Monday. I thought I was well prepared, and I ended up having to do about another 10 hours of work, as you probably did too, Doug, on Monday, for Tuesday's college basketball. Uh, we ended up going 2-1 and one with free and premium plays combined on Tuesday night, where we're doing this one on Wednesday afternoon, right before the game start tipping off on Wednesday evening. Much more manageable card on Wednesday uh, than it was on Tuesday. 
Uh, but listen, here's what's going on for me. Besides checking all of our college basketball plays, Doug, mind everybody else's at DocSports.com and checking NBA Daily, all that good stuff. I do have an eight-star in college football going this week, Doug. It's my first of the college football season. Uh, went 2-0 and with these plays last year. And college and pro combined now are 80% going back to the start of last year, going 4-1. and one. And uh, so it's the first college football eight-star that I've had this season. It's going this week, and it's my lead play. We just won our sixth straight seven-star play in football, college and pro combined, last week. And we swept the college football card last week. And so uh, we're looking to rack it up and have another big card again. And uh, the eight-star, again, will be out in the forefront of this weekend's college and pro football package, which, by the way, folks, you can get on Thursdays. Every Thursday is football Thursday at DocSports.com when we all release our football plays for the upcoming weekend. Doug, what say you? What you got going this weekend? Yeah, you know, with college basketball uh, starting, yeah, it, it was a, a rude slap in the face, you know, to uh, to have to go through all those numbers. And it's and it's even more challenging this I this this is to me the, the most challenging year to go into because the transfer portal is it's like a revolving door. I mean, it, it puts the the uh, Dr. Pepper commercial to shame. OK, instead you just <laughs> need that door that just goes like this because that's what's going on now. So to, so to keep track of that and trying to figure out any continuity with, with these teams, not easy to do. So uh, I I I. I think I know you well enough. You're not going to just go charging into this season. You're going to take it as it comes a little bit. And that's exactly what I'm going to do is just, you know, be very selective and see what we can do to find some winners to get things going that way. Now, as far as football goes, uh, last week, based on units, I did not have a, my record was not a winning day, but I had a, but I had a winning day based on units and that's money. So that counts for yeah. something. And uh, so we'll, we'll take that. So that was good. Uh, now 14 and six on the season for weekly best bets in college and pro football uh, this season. So that, that was good stuff. I will certainly have some big plays. I, as we do this video, I have not finalized everything. I, go, I always go through everything to do it on Wednesday nights. So I have not a, uh, I don't have a big play yet, but for sure I will. Okay. I mean, it's a, it's a given because that's uh that's, you know, that's how you figure out some stuff and have something, you know, for the clients that want those big plays. And let's face it, big plays matter to a lot of people that are buying selections. So I'll be ready for that this weekend. And uh, so, yeah, I'm just, I, I'm fired up. I, I like the, 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 like this Baylor uh, Oklahoma game that's at noon or well noon Eastern. So I'm looking forward. That's a great way to start off a Saturday, Scott. I'm looking forward to doing it. And by the way, you had the winning day, as far as I'm concerned, because you won money. And I'd rather be two and three and turn out ahead for the day money-wise than be three and two and lose a few bucks, but tell everybody you went 60%. You know what I mean? So we're here to make money. And that's the bottom line. And you had a winning day. So good stuff. Uh, anyway, I wanted to really I mentioned real quickly also that uh, – you know, you get the college basketball plays each and every day, the NBA plays every day, uh, hockey, all of the above. Just check it out over at DocSports.com, and you'll see everybody who is involved each and every day of the week. Also, at the top of your screen, you see that free $60 account. Uh, below the video, you will see a link. You click on that link, set yourself up for the free $60 account if you're not yet a member, and then you get to use that against any of our daily packages, Doug's, mine, anybody else. Purchase that daily package, use the free 60 bucks on that daily package, which means since daily packages are generally 30 bucks, you can use it on more than just one if you wish. So there you go. He's Doug Upstone. I'm Scott Spritzer. We are DocSports.com. Let's put them in the wind column, everybody.